Why people hate economists? First, they are not hating economists. They despise macroeconomists. Also, other reasons are people have a bad relationship with money and they expect economists to be fortune tellers. Rather, most are just experts of hindsight wisdom. Hi, you're listening to Musings of a Quant Economics grad. My name is Ashish Kaurav. I have done my master's in quantitative economics from the Indian Statistical Institute at Kolkata. And earlier, I have done my B.Tech from IIT Kharagpur. So you can see that I am not just trained in social sciences, but even physical sciences. Just to digress, I have a theory that physics is philosophy and maths. And similarly, economics is psychology and maths. This means that economics models people's behavior quite rigorously. And I must add mathematically inside the brackets. As laws makes physics pretty predictable, assumptions make economics quite unpredictable. And if I could recall a famous quote by a politician, give me an economist with one hand. The thing over here is generally economists come up with statements like on one hand, if you do X, you will have Y. And on the other hand, if you do A, you will get B. So a single economist has at least two theories going on in his or her head. So just imagine how can two economists agree on a particular thing. And most of these disagreements stem from the political discussions around macroeconomics because nobody till date has truly understood how will interest rate vary in the next quarter? How is that related to the currency fluctuations? And how is it related to GDP numbers? And how in turn those GDP numbers are related to the unemployment numbers? And how those unemployment numbers are related to inflation numbers? So you see a whole lot of factors, parameters and statistics is not very easy to pinpoint. Very unlike physics. In physics, if I particularly look at classical mechanics, I can pretty much understand the trajectory of a particle if I have all the information available with me, right? But if you ask me what will be the trajectory of interest rate for the next five years, for the next five months, for the next five decades, I would have really, really a very low confidence in my prediction. A topic of physics which has a lot of assumptions is thermodynamics and I'm reminded of a quote or rather a beginning line from a book in statistical thermodynamics and it was something in the lines of that people who have studied, read or done a lot of research in statistical thermodynamics have committed suicide or ended their lives in miserable ways and we are about to get ourselves into that venture now not committing suicide venture but reading thermodynamics venture so you see that whenever there is a lot of uncertainty in any field of study you have to understand that it's not easy to explain it to a lot of people at the very minimum at least it's not even comprehensible to the people in the community so there is a lot of disagreement inside the economics community as well about various factors that how x affects y and how is x related to y and which is the direction of causality all these things are pretty debatable after so much of rambling the takeaway for you is economics is not meant to be a predictive science at most it is explanatory and prescriptive now what i mean to say here is if you remember my initial lines i started this with economics is just expertise in hindsight wisdom similarly that explanatory power of economics is more to do with what happened in the past and how it happened and what are the prescriptive devices or instruments which you can have in future if such instances happen again now there are few success stories in economics as well and a very famous impactful is about the Grameen Bank model of microfinance in Bangladesh now I don't need to explain you what is microfinance what is Grameen Bank and why it is so relevant 
if i have to just give you one line about it it circumvented a very difficult problem of lending in unorganized sector and the problem was how to understand the credit worthness of someone who does not have credit history now this is something which really is i would say a kind of a milestone for economists and a lot of people have studied uh, the gramin bank model and a lot of people have tried to replicate that but the problem here is that when people try to replicate that model they tend to forget that that model is not simply a plus b gives you c it has hell lot of catalysts and hell lot of factors going for it which are missed by a lot of microfinance organizations now this is because economics is not really a very perfect science it it has a lot of psychological aspects as well and if you kind of have some kind of an uh, awareness about behavioral economics you will understand that a lot of assumptions in economics and specifically in microeconomics deals with people who are rational who have computational power of a computer who can determine what is the optimal thing for them what is the optimal bundle for them what is the optimal amount of investment they need to do now these optimal calculations or computations are actually not done by the human mind always human mind tries to find shortcuts to these computations now whenever you try to find shortcuts to these computations a lot of your psychological aspects come into it a lot of biases come into it so when you want to study these biases psychological aspects of behavior and money is on the table then it comes behavioral economics and i would say that if there is something which is really economics it's behavioral economics anything which is not behavioral economics is i would say has no great future and the thing here is that if you are not applying mathematics to analyze your models if you're just talking in terms of uh, theories and stories without backing it up with rigor of mathematics you are just a politician who has learned economics jargons so that is what you need to understand that economics is a pretty subtle field and it has a lot of mathematical demand and it has to study psychology so it is a very complex field but if you try to understand what are the behaviors which can be explained quite neatly by economics you would be blown away if you have heard of signaling if you have heard of game theory if you have heard of consumer surplus then you would understand that these things are pretty valuable to understand if i just give you an example let's say the government tries to increase the tax on cigarettes so what will happen to the uh, tax i mean who will have to bear it more the smokers or the cigarette manufacturers and will it be good for the society now to answer this you need to understand a pretty basic concept of microeconomics called elasticity so you see that if you know economics you can explain a lot of things but you cannot predict a lot of things so explanation and prediction are two very different things and even prescription is something which economists can do but those prescriptions don't have the potency of a doctor a doctor can give you a prescription that do this do that and you will be cured but an economist can just give you a broad theme that if you do this these are the things which are expected to happen because an economist has to think about social behavior and social behavior is something which is not easy to predict because you have n number of factors which goes into the minds of society and that dictates the social behavior so net net you have to first understand that that the task economics has taken on its head is a pretty audacious task and if you expect it to be always right or if you expect it to fulfill your predictive needs you will always be disappointed i would uh, like to urge you that do share this or 
give it a thumbs up and if you're new don't forget to subscribe and do check out the book links and video links in the description box if you're preparing for economics entrances or just interested in economics and statistics and also don't forget to give your feedback in the comment section